Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and later in the show, we will address the worsening crisis in Haiti and why folks in South Florida need to pay attention. But first, Fort Lauderdale City Commissioner Ben Sorensen is running for the congressional seat being vacated by Ted Deutsch. Sorensen will face Jared Moskowitz in the Democratic primary this August. And as you will see, the cornerstone of Sorensen's campaign is attacking Moskowitz for having served as the Director of Emergency Management in the DeSantis administration. I start our interview, however, asking him why he is running. So my parents instilled in me a sense of service at an early age. My dad, um, right after college, he heard about uh, a group called the Southern Christian Leadership Convention that was uh, fighting segregation in the South. And, and he went down there and helped uh, organize and support Freedom Riders. And that kind of dedication of his towards fighting for equality and so forth carried on throughout his life. Uh, it's also something that was shared by my mom. And having been friends with, with Ted Deutsch for a while, when he shared that he wasn't running for re-election, you know, uh, continuing Ted's fantastic legacy and around three or four key issues that are near and dear to my heart, um, and I'm happy to go into these. Uh, well, let me ask you a question. Let me, let, me, yeah. let me ask you. So tell me what are some of those key issues? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, one of the top ones for me is gun control. So having been in the military now, going on 15 years, um, I'm trained on and very familiar with weapons of war. Assault weapons, uh, AR-15s, are military-grade weapons of war that do not belong on our streets, in our communities, and obviously not in our schools. We also need to push for a national background check. Um, finally, mass capacity magazines need to be eliminated as well. And so part of that, why I'm running, is we need to bring back the assault weapons ban uh, that lapsed. Another key priority for me is affordability, affordable housing, workforce housing. The city of Fort Lauderdale, we've invested in building hundreds of affordable workforce housing units in the city, and we have thousands more that we're working on right now. We need to do more at a federal level. Another big piece for me uh, is that we've got to look at climate change, and we are ground zero for climate change. And one of the things I think we need to be doing more of is getting HUD grant funding, not for after the storm, but actually for before, for our communities that are at risk, that are vulnerable in the city of Fort Lauderdale, we've invested over $300 million in stormwater improvements. So that's another big, big topic for me. And then I'll end with this is we need someone who's going to be a fighter. I'm a lifelong Democrat. Uh, one of my opponents, Jared Moskowitz, uh, has worked for Ron DeSantis, is a two-time appointee of Ron DeSantis, uh, supported a half million dollar uh, super PAC Trump uh, check when he was uh, working at Ashford. So that's not what we need, especially as a Democratic uh, uh, congressman uh, representing South Florida. Your campaign seems in part focused on the idea that Jared Moskowitz isn't a true Democrat uh, because he worked in the DeSantis administration. Uh, are you saying that you don't believe Jared uh, Moskowitz is an actual Democrat anymore? I'm saying that someone who's been appointed to, to two political positions by Ron DeSantis is not the type of individual well, that's going to best... Let me, let me just stop you there. So sure. one of them was, he, he was uh, named the Director of Emergency Management in the DeSantis yep. administration. And the second one was when several members of the Broward County Commission ran for different seats, the governor appointed Jared Moskowitz to the Broward County Commission. Would you have preferred, exactly. would you have preferred for the governor to have appointed a Republican to the Broward County Commission instead of Jared Moskowitz? What I think is someone who is given political favors by the governor, um, what is, how does that play out in his policy positions? I sure do not hear uh, Jared Moskowitz criticizing the governor, um, standing up against the governor. We need someone who's going to stand up against Ron DeSantis and MAGA Republicans. As a result of being given these positions, he is going to be much less likely to stand up against these, what I think are discriminatory policies. So are you suggesting that Jared Moskowitz supported the so-called don't say gay bill, supported the 
governor's attempts at congressional redistricting supported, you know, open carry. I try and understand, are you running against Jared Moskowitz or are you running against, are you running against Ron DeSantis? What I'm suggesting is someone who's appointed by Ron DeSantis is going to be much less likely to stand up and stand against his policies. I'm standing against Ron DeSantis policies and for pro-democratic policies that will move our community forward. The first thing that he was appointed to by Governor DeSantis was to be the director of emergency management. Uh, he was in that position through the pandemic. Other than the fact that Ron DeSantis appointed him, are you criticizing the work that he did as the director of emergency management during the pandemic? I have real concerns with Ron DeSantis's COVID leadership. I do not. Yes, asking, I do not. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm asking you no. the policies, what, what Jared Moskowitz did, separate from what the governor may have been saying at press conferences. I'm asking, was there something that, that, that Jared Moskowitz did in his role that you believe was wrong when it came to COVID? I have absolutely, yes, I have absolute concerns with how, for example, vaccines were rolled out in the state of Florida. Right, Jim? I mean, you, I'm sure you probably saw this. I mean, the distribution raised major concerns about communities that were given what seemed like benefit of the doubt for getting them first. I mean, the attack on our schools and our school boards, those are all major, major concerns about the COVID policy uh, that was moved forward. Let me ask you this. While Jared was was the director of emergency management and you're a for Oradale city commissioner. Did you ever reach out to Jared Moskowitz to ask for assistance from the oh. department of emergency management? Absolutely. The city of Fort Lauderdale, we, we all were reaching out to everyone possible. Well, I'm, I'm to asking get support. you, you as an elected official. Not absolutely. The city. Oh, absolutely. You, and so did, let me ask you this. Did you find yep. that it was easier to reach someone in the DeSantis administration like Jared Moskowitz, who you would have a relationship with because you've known him, than if he, the governor had appointed someone else who you had no contact with and no, no background with. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, during the pandemic, did you benefit from the fact that Jared Moskowitz, as a Democrat, was in that administration, and so therefore you had access to him, but now you're criticizing him for being part of an administration that you needed the help from at the time? Oh, no, I think whoever is whoever was in that role would have done the best they could to serve the communities. And so I, I had no strong relationship with Jared more so than I would with anyone else who was there. You've had some issues as well. There was a internal city audit report uh, from last year dealing with what turned out to be about a million dollars, as because I read the audit report, about a million dollars in improvements to your neighborhood from a, from a, because of a sewer break. And as a result, the cleanup there, about a million dollars that should have been authorized through the city commission, but wasn't. And then the audit report found that you were very heavy handed in trying to pressure city officials to get the work done in your neighborhood. How do you respond? Yeah, Jim, I was working hard. We had 250 million gallon uh, sewage spill uh, in the city. And I was working hard on behalf of my constituents to get a public safety hazard uh, cleared and a, an area uh, remedy. And so that's what I was doing, was working uh, very closely with our, our city leadership to do that. Hey, well, this wasn't an issue of tact. This was an issue of you being perceived to strong arm city officials who you shouldn't be doing that to, shouldn't having direct contact with in that manner, pressuring them to do work that wasn't approved by the commission itself. Yeah, and I, I was not doing that. I was, I was not doing it. I wasn't pressuring uh, anyone to do any work that, uh, that wasn't approved or wasn't appropriate. Well, that's what the audit said. Do you deny that's what the audit says? Oh, what I'm saying is I was working hard <clears throat> to do and remedy a situation, engage fully with city staff. And, um, and that's what we were working towards and that's what was happening. I understand advocating for your constituents, but this was more than just your constituents. This was your neighborhood. I mean, you lived where this break took place, correct? The Absolutely. 
the improvements that that the audit says that you pressured city officials to conduct without the approval of the city commission ended up financially benefiting your property value, wouldn't you say? So I was advocating for our neighborhood just as I would advocate for any other neighborhood. And this was approved by city staff. So this was not me going off on my own and approving or, or pushing for something that uh, city staff was not approving and moving forward. But, they, but city staff was approving and moving forward with it because you were calling and texting several times a day, key city staff people, correct? I was talking to city staff leadership and, and they were moving forward with remedying the situation. Okay, earlier you raised an issue and I wanted to just go back to it because yeah. you said something about a half a million dollar. Explain to me again what, what your allegation is as it relates to um, Jared Moskowitz contributing to the Donald Trump campaign? Is that what you're saying? So, no, I, I, what uh, Jared did was when he was at uh, Ashbrit, private entity, um, he approved, supported a half million dollar uh, Trump super PAC contribution going from Ashbrit to a pro-Trump super PAC. This was 2018. What, what, it, wait, so let's, let's stop there. Yeah. What, what, you use the word approved and supported. What evidence do you have that he approved and supported that payment? So he was the general counsel at Ashford at that time. And um, so the uh, uh, assumption would be that that would come across his desk. And it turns out that the FEC uh, deemed that actually an illegal contribution. And so Jared was writing to the FEC uh, seeking to remedy that uh, illegal contribution. And ultimately, the FEC fined Ashford, I believe, $125,000 for that uh, illegal contribution. Well, how do you know about it that he knew about it before? My assumption is that given his role as, I think his, he was also executive vice president, so that high-level role in organization and general counsel, that this is something that would have been um, checked in on him, with him, uh, before actually being submitted from the company. Again, this is not from Randy Perkins, this is from the company itself. So my guess is that he was aware of that before uh, it happened. But I'm happy to you know, ask him more about that when I see him. When we come back, we look at Haiti. Stay with us. 